This is Jamal, last year, year 11. Um, this is me and him in Italy. He got so drunk off his face. In the garden where we planted the seeds. August 21st, 2009. We lost three very close people from our lives. Three years on, and it's still remembered. Is their story. Jamal as a brother, like he had his moments, like he was very happy, like very cheerful, like he just loved everyone, like especially his family. He was very, he was very active, always outgoing, you know. My relationship with Jamal was like, most of the man we were like brothers back, like we still are brothers. Let me scrap that, we, are, we still are brothers, so. It was like we could go, he would come to my house on a random and me and him would just talk for hours about everything, anything. Like, he knows secrets that I don't think no one else knows, that I know. And he told me stuff that no one else should know or would know unless he, he had confidence in you, you know what I'm saying? The trust in that. So, yeah, he was like my brother. We done a lot of stuff. Like, one time I remember I was going to Watford in the morning to go shopping. And I was just on the bus. We spent like the whole day together, the shopping, bus and joke. I remember I must took some money out of my account because I had the EMA bonus. And flipping, he was gassing me. He's like, take it out, take it out. I was like, nah, man, it might be an AC. The bank might try to close my bank account down and everything there. And he was just like, nah, take it out. And I gassed it. And then, boy, I took it out. I got shook. Had to call my mum up real quick. He was just laughing in the background. But yeah, man. He was just a kind character still. Like, well, obviously, when I first met him, I think I met him when I was in like year eight, obviously through Harrow schools and that. So he was just more like, I was thinking, right, this guy that's kind of greasy. <laughs> but this guy that's kind of greasy, he's still like, he looked older, way older than man. Obviously, like, he'd had his beard from from early as well. But I was thinking, yeah, this guy he looks kind of mad. But when I was chatting to him now, he was just calm, like, he was proper cool. He's a cool character still. So me and him just got along well from there. Jamal was something different. Jamal was like, he's like literally my brother from another mother, literally. Like, we used to talk like, every day, every like, single day from, from the moment I met him. Because Jamal, I'd met him outside of school, I met him in football. Um, we played football, to, I played against his team when his team had just come up into my division in year eight. And we're going into year eight, and I beat him. Like, I scored against him, and I remember from that moment we had an instant mutual like thing. Good, man. <laughs> uh, I met Jamal in year seven. We went to Roxith Manor. We're both in the same class, so we've known each other for a long time. The Craig, I met Craig in high school, year eight, through Jamal. Hip Craig and Jamal were tight. They lived near each other, so I met, that's how I met Craig. Craig, we use basketball in. There's always a basketball thing in me and Craig, yeah? We were born like in the same month, me and him like the same shit all day long. That was my cold day, you get me? Me and him used to roll tight all day. Craig, like, like I, I can't explain him, but he's just like second half of me. He's like just like me, you get me? So that's how me and him was tight like that. Like, he does the same thing as man, I do the same thing for him, you get me? It's a real relationship there. You know what? Mm. First time I ever spoke to Craig properly, we was called Sly Utes and we used to do MC and it was in it was in someone's garage or something. And then Craig was a little joker, he's like they're quiet, he's keeping his jokes, this and that. And I was like, oh, I don't really know him in it. And then we start talking, he's making telling me stuff about I'm not gonna mention who, but he's telling me their jokes about girls or what and I was just like, oh shit, this guy's a joke. And then I realised that him and Jamal had that relationship. But them two were like inseparable. Wherever Jamal was, Craig was, you know what I'm saying? Like if you say, oh, you're coming, you know Craig's coming with Jamal, but Jamal's coming with Craig. So yeah, man, that's the, that's the first first time I met Craig was in the studio. And he dropped them bars. And then we went to Abel's house and he dropped some, he wrote the chorus with, with Little Nathan, he wrote the chorus to Flo Nasty. 
and then from there it was just love, man. Um, Craig, I met through Jamal. Craig was a good guy as well. Um, when I first met him, instantly started cracking jokes and that. So it was mutual, like straight away. And you know, get to know him a little bit better. And he was a good person. Me and Craig got close. At one stage, I went to his house, met his mum and his dad. They were lovely people. And then we went on to this music thing together. So we was doing the flow nasty. And then whatever happened with the flow nasty, certain people went their own way. And Craig went like disappeared for a while. And then he's coming back. So he was coming back. I'd say around April. He was start to come back around the man. And that's when we started seeing each other. Not the wild, not that's how we flow. I don't hide. I'm humble. I don't clean. I don't humble. You wanna be? Wanna jump? Fire my Even if you're that biscuit, I'm gonna make you crumble. I'm more young, ready to rumble. We're the king of the concrete jungle. Flow nasty, king of the jungle. When I roll on my ones or two, we can pull your vibe on you. Let me tell you how to move your crew in an instant rap. Yeah, we gonna do. La di da di 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 di. Don't fuck with me, it's your life you choose. Back my team to the end, that bruise. Always been in the line. Well, I found Craig to be was a very, very quiet member of the basketball squad. I knew him through his basketball more than anything. However, he was always a team player, um, never let anybody down, and he just wanted to be the best basketballer that he could be. So, no matter when we had training, he would always turn up on time and train for as long as possible until I kicked him out of the gym. With Jamal, he was a little bit different. He was uh, the life and soul of the social side of school. Um, always had his arm around a girl, a bit of a player. Um, but the thing I remember most about him was his, his smile. He had a fantastic smile, all-encompassing, welcoming smile. And I had always, always had plenty of time for him. Jamal, when he was a little boy, he was this hyperactive little kid. Like, he couldn't even, we weren't allowed to give him Coke or no fizzy drinks because he was just on a nuts one. But Jamal, he was very, always very hyper, very outgoing. I remember like nursery times in school, mum had to sign an accident book every day because he was always having some kind of accident. When I found out about Jamal's death, it was crazy because um, on that day, I'd had a, a show. I was doing my first like, show when like, I was 17. I remember it was called Hey Arnold. And I had like bare, like, that's, that's before like, I was trying to do my industry thing. And I had bare, like, known faces coming. And I was so excited. And it was like, I remember what it was is um, on the 21st of August, that day. And I wanted, he, I wanted him to come because I saw him two days before that. And I remember I was like to him, it's like, like tiptoe, you're not, you're, not, you're not trying to support, man. I was with Drew, so I'm trying to support, man, but I see him up in High Park. He was like, what are you talking about? I was like, bro, I've got my show, I've been selling tickets for months, and he didn't even cop one, like, like, what's going on? And he's like, you know what, I'll cop it now, kind of thing. And you know a man say that, they just, you know what I mean, chatting, whatever. So I was like, Psst, ain't copying one. Pulled out his money, cop the ticket, and I'm gonna be there. That was like, you know, like two days later, two days coming. And then obviously, I see him again the next day and he was with CJ and I think someone else, like Viper, Chris A. And they were going through Harrow and I saw them and I was like, yeah, you might make sure you roll. And he was on the phone at the time, so I spoke to Chris for a bit. And I told Jamal as he walked off, I said to Jamal, make sure you come, he was on the phone, he looked back and went, I'll be there kind of thing, he walked off. And then on the day, I've turned up to my show and I'm excited because it's going well. And I'm 17 and you know what I'm saying, I'm seeing bad people that I don't even know coming. I'm thinking, yeah, it's gonna be a nice night. And I'm on the phone to one of my friends and she's like, you know Jamal's dead. And I've looked over and I'm seeing Jamal Joseph, one of my friends from my year, and I'm like, of course, of course he is. I up and get it. She's like, nah, 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 Jamal tiptoe. So I'm thinking, if this is the same tiptoe I know, he's probably spread the rumor by himself and he's gonna turn up looking so fly. What the girl am I gonna be with him? I was just thinking, eat, dead man, whatever man, kind of thing. Locked off the phone. Turn around to my boy, what? Is Jamal dead? Like, yeah, he died in a car crash like today with blah 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 blah. The night before, I mean the same night. Um, seen Jamal outside Oceano. We just come out with a bunch of us, and um, he'd come from Candy, and he was with um, Conrad and Craig, and um, they looked like they looked like they'd been having fun. And they said to us, I remember speaking to Jamal because I hadn't spoken to him for like a month or so. Um, 
that month and basically I said to him like base like what's been going on like how come you didn't come on the bus he goes if I knew I would have come and he was saying if I knew I would have come but I didn't know but these lot wanted to come out so we came out and I remember them not just messing about having fun like everyone was just cracking jokes like and then I said to him you know what like you should come with us lot like because we're going back home like you might as well come with us and he said I can't because I can't leave these lot I came with these lot I understood that because that's, like, that's, that's Jamal, that's Jamal in it, that's Jamal for you, like he's not going to leave people. So in the end, like I said to him, like, I'll talk to you tomorrow, like, call me tomorrow as soon as we get home, like we'll link up man, because it was the summer holidays and it was coming to the end of the summer holidays and we're going to go back to college again. So I said, Blood, just make sure. And then um, got home and I remember like we was outside for hours outside of my house with my lot, with um, um, Jide, Leslie, um, I think Jerome was in the car as well. And we was outside and we'd just been talking for hours. So we had no idea like, what had happened, like nothing had what been going on. And then um, we didn't find out till the next day. And I got a phone call from, um, I got a text actually from Jiddy telling me that Jamal's dead. I just come back from my grandparents and where they're from, like up north, like they got some outdoor swimming pool. So I was gassed on swimming. I was like, yo, we need to go swimming. And Jamal was like, yeah, I'm coming. And he's like, I'll be at your house at two o'clock. And I was like, Jamal, you're a shit. You don't come to my house on time. You'll be two hours late. He said, nah, I'm changing. And then he's like, I've changed. I'm a changed person now. I'm going to be on time with the time. And I was like, cool, let me see how this goes. And he was at my house at like 2.30, I was like, you're late. He said, at least I still came and I'm not as late as I normally am. So then we went and met up with Viper, Chris A, and then we went to Ride Slip. And for some odd reason, Jamal had an apple in his bag and he was just eating it. And we was busting up and we was talking about getting tattoos. He said he wanted to get both sleeves done. And then I was like, yeah, next time you go get a tattoo, let me know. And he was like, yeah, I will. And then, boy, we was talking about getting an R1, R6, we talk about motorbikes, cars, everything. Then we came back and I said to Jamal, look, tomorrow don't shake me again because I like the way you're acting up, like acting at the moment. We gotta go to Arnold's show. He said, yeah, don't worry, I won't. And I said, don't go Oceana because tomorrow I wanna have a nice night out. He said, yeah, don't worry. I said, tell Craig the same. I said, both of you roll safe. And then, boy, that was the last time I saw Jamal and that's the, probably the happiest memory I've had of him. In, like, one of the top, top. Five, I'd say. Personally, you know, after I left high school, uh, Jamal, I kept on seeing him. You know, I see him always in Harold Craig. To be honest, I didn't really see him too tough. I saw him every once in a blues. And literally, like, in the space of three years, I saw him like four or five times. I was going to Egypt for a holiday for like a good month and a bit, yeah. And I was just with chicks and randomly just said like, you know what, can we go chill? Chill, chill at Craig's. Chill at Craig's. Just randomly. <laughs> and I thought, you know, to, to myself, I haven't seen that guy in time. Come and go check Craig. Like. And I swear to you, the week before I left, I spent every day we went to his house. Just every day we played Call of Duty, fight night. Every day we cracked jokes. I haven't seen that guy and I told him, literally, the day before I was going to Egypt. Don't be a stranger, my brother. Like, show me yourself, you know, let me see you, fam. How long did you go to Egypt? Well, I went to Egypt for like a month, fam. And I swear to you, but halfway through that day, halfway through my holiday, bro, I was on Facebook, randomly, just checking up on the hood. I see R.I.P. Craig, R.I.P. Craig and Jamal, R.I.P. I thought, what? This is how I'm kind of, kind of joking. And like, the more I scrolled down, the more I saw the seriousness in it. And the more I saw, like, this is actually serious. Literally, like, two, three hours later, I got a phone call all day from London. My, my cousin's telling me, like, yo, the boys from high school passed away. And, like, you know what I mean? And then that's when it really hit me. Yeah, basically, I think I was next door in that room in the studio. And, like, I heard it. Someone texted to me. I was with Andre and someone texted me and I was like, I hate when people start like, start up rumours and things like that. So I didn't really believe it at the time. So I was just chilling now and then my phone just kept kept ringing like different people. And I'm like, this is actually looking true, like it's actually looking real. So this happened after my uncle died as well. So to me it was just like it was crazy for me, like double dose it. Like, I couldn't even cry at the time. I, after I was just at the funeral, that's that's when it actually really hit me, like, and that's when the, the tears came and all of that. And be real, obviously, I was crying at the funeral. So now it's an emotional time, even up till now. Trying to trying to catch me, catch tears, you know. <laughs>
<laughs> we get our shot. Um, how I felt when I found out about Craig and Jamal I was very, very, very upset. Um, I felt that it was such a loss of such a valuable life at such a young age, tragic. Um, I know the road very well, I travel that way. So when I go to Watford from Northwood and I pass the Memorial Stone outside the college almost every weekend and it brings back memories, although fantastic memories of the boys themselves, just a tragic, short life. When I found out about the accident, I felt sick. Like, if I could take my life, then I would have. If I could spare my life for Jamal just to have his life, then I would have. It was a mad situation because, like, no one really knew what was going on. We didn't find out until 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the accident happened at 10 to 4 in the morning. And I just felt sick. Like, I remember the night it happened, everyone was here. Our mum was talking about funeral arrangements. And I was like, but mum, like, no, like, it's not happening. Like, it was, it was like a nightmare. Like, it's not explainable, but it's, it's the worst feeling ever. You wouldn't want anyone else to go through that. If the same thing happened to anybody else, that they need to make sure that their friends and family are around them because in this case the friends and family of Jamal and Craig have been absolutely huge for them and it's testament to the families of how they still remember the boys and they will still remember them forever. So it's all about friends and family. I'm still getting over the situation like the death and everything else, just losing Jamal. I have my bad days and my good days like all of us. But the only advice I would give to anyone is just talk about it. Like you can't sit there and just build it up because you're either gonna get angry, or you're dealing with you're dealing with it by yourself. If you talk to people, then it can ease the situation. Although we have lost not only one but three very close people from our lives, it's clear to see and very safe to say that they've gone without being forgotten. Now we can sit here and be sad, soak, mourn, but that wouldn't bring them back. So what I would say is, let's be happy, let's rejoice, let's celebrate at the fact that they still have a very safe and secure spot in our, all our lives and in all our hearts. So yeah, let's remember the boys, not for their death, but for who they were and how much they meant.